Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and welcome to another PCB breakdown. This time we're going to be taking a look at an R9 Fury Nitro. Uh, and this is only possible thanks to one of the viewers who went and took photos of their R9 Fury Nitro and sent them in. So huge thanks to that guy for sending in the photos. But a note for next time, get me a photo similar to this of the back of the PCB as well, because... I'll cover everything on the front, but I don't have a good photo to use for the back. Not that it really matters, because there's only one voltage on the back. So, with that out of the way, let's get on with the voltages we can identify on the front of the PCB. So, first things first, core voltage is right here. Above that is what I very strongly suspect to be HBM. Um, and over on the other side of the card, we have the auxiliary rail. So, that would be HBM right here. Boom. Uh, auxiliary over there. And then the core down here. So, basically this goes to the GPU core. That also goes to the GPU core because that's basically for the memory controller and some of the supporting logic. And the M HBM goes to the, you know, these little chips surrounding the GPU core. So those are the HBM stacks. And then everything... And, and this sort of... This sort of golden stuff, that's that's the interposer. And that's what I broke on one of my Fury X's. So, well, I suspect I broke that on one of my Fury X's. And this is not repairable, so... Yeah, be very gentle with it. Luckily, Sapphire does ship a plastic protector, which you can sort of see in this photo. So, Sapphire cards are, you know, they're better protected than the other ones because they do get that little plastic cover on the interposer. So then... That out of the way, let's get on with the actual VRM quality. Um, this was a little bit hard. Well, actually, no. I still haven't fit quite figured out what exactly these uh, these ICs right here are. Um, because these, like, the model number on them doesn't lead to anything. However, there's not that many ICs that come in this package. So, as you can clearly see, there's this big metal surface on them, and that is really unique amongst, uh, well, power stages, because these are a type of power stage. This is a power stage package, uh, as far as I'm aware. So, and in this case, it is a power stage package. I think you could probably use it for something else, but I've only ever seen it used for power stages. Uh, and these are from IR, but the model number on them doesn't actually lead to anything on International Rectifier's website. So I'm going to say these are 3575s. Um, first of all, because the 3570 series is the only series of power stages that uses this package type with the little metal section. And also because, well, the 3575 is not that different from the 3579 and the 3579A, all three of which are rated for 60 amps. Uh, and then there's a 3578, and that one's rated for 50 amps. So at worst, I'm at worst I'm wrong, and this is a 300 amp VRM at 125 degrees. And at best, I'm correct, and it's 360 amps at 125 degrees. So, and I suspect it's the 3575 because while well, the 3575 has been used on several other GPUs by other manufacturers, so it's a relatively popular component, so I'd be surprised if it was something else. So, this is probably a 360 amp uh, VRM at 125 degrees. So, very, very capable. And it can handle burst currents of up to 90 amps per phase for like 5 milliseconds. So, that works out to like 450 amps for 5 milliseconds. So, basically, if, you know, you have a big current spike, yeah, the VRM is going to be fine with it. Um, which is good because of just how the newer AMD GPUs do their power management. They do tend to occasionally spike really, really hard uh, under normal workloads, though I still doubt you would exceed that 360 amp rating to start with for a very long period of time at least. So I wouldn't really worry about the burst rating at all because uh, you shouldn't really be ever getting near it. So... Yeah, very, you know, high power VRM, because we do have one, two, three, four, five, six phases. These are, you know, individually controlled by the IR3567B, which is a standard voltage controller for most high-end AMD GPUs. 
so all the Furies have it, all the 390s have it, all the 390X, uh, 90Xs have it, all the RX 480s have it. It's, you, you get it. AMD really loves this voltage controller, and it's a really good one. Um, so thanks to that, this VRM also actually runs really, really clean, just because this is a really good voltage controller, but also you get the benefit of these being power stages, and they offer a bunch of extra voltage management, well, basically voltage control features uh, that you don't get in discrete MOSFETs as easily. So basically, this VRM is really, really efficient, will run really cool because, well, that metal surface is there specifically to improve VRM cooling, and will also run really, really clean. So overall, this is a really great VRM on a Fury. Like, there's not really much to complain about here. Beyond that, Sapphire has also gone with more capacitors than you find on the reference design PCB for the Fury and the Fury X, uh, because that PCB is limited to, well, capacitors that fit under the, wa uh, the water cooler of a Fury X. And while they could be this size, uh, none of them are just because of how the water cooler is just shaped. It's basically a giant metal block at the bottom. So there's no space for capacitors, so that's limited to tantalums. These are 820 microfarad uh, electrolytics, rated for 5,000 hours. So this, you know, this has more, capaci more capacitance on it, so it's going to run cleaner because more capacitors, it's going to run even... The, then you have the benefit of the, you know, full, the power IR stages, and you also have the really great voltage controller, but all the Furies have that. So, really, really nice VRM. There's not really anything to complain about. Of course, it could be more powerful if it had more phases, but you really shouldn't need it. Even on LN2, a Fury is actually relatively tame in terms of power consumption. Um, so yeah, very, very nice uh, you know, VRM designed by Sapphire here. Above that, we find the HBM VRM, and this one is a lot less impressive. This right here, which you can't read, is a 4C10 from On Semiconductor. That should be, I think, everybody should know what that is. It's been used on so many cards. And this down here is a 4C05, also from On Semiconductor. Together, they should be able to, of hand, to, well, basically together, they should be capable of handling about 25 amps at 125 degrees. And this is possible because I finally, well, I've got a working version of a, uh, well, basically a buck converter power losses. So basically I've gone out and found a equation that does the calculation for VRM uh, MOSFET heat heat output, which is what you need, well, th there's a whole another video where I'll explain how that works, but basically these can do 25 amps at 125 degrees, and there was one more part to it, right, at 1.5 volts and 500 kilohertz switching frequency, and I chose 500 kilohertz switching frequency because that is a, uh, I do believe that's the switch, that's like 10 kilohertz right above a reference uh, Fury X design, so it should be like it should be either lower or at that frequency, and that means that if it does 25 amps at 500 kilohertz, then it can do more at lower frequencies. So yeah, there is nothing to complain. Like this 25 amps looks really kind of small next to that 360A we got down here for the core voltage. However, you got to remember HBM basically runs on the ambient energy of the air. Uh, it runs on very very little power. Um, and I do believe it's been placed to, like, the 4 gigs on the Fury are expected to pull, like, 10 watts or something. Like, it's really, really small amounts of power. So it really doesn't matter that this VRM right here isn't anything incre incredibly powerful. And so, you know, there's no problem with Sapphire going for this option. And again, you get extra capacitance, because Sapphire isn't limited by, you know, having a tiny gap under the heatsink where to cram all of their capacitors. So that would that should give you cleaner HBM power, and that actually would give the Nitro cards an advantage, because when I was modding all of my own Fury Xs with extra capacitors, one thing I noticed was once I added something like, what was it, 4,000 microfarads, which I think was really overkill, because I didn't test with less capacitors. I just slapped two on there and was like, okay, we'll, we'll start with two, which isn't very sci scientific, but, well, capacitors are cheap, so you might as run as many as you can fit. So... Well, one of the things I noticed is basically adding capacitors made it 
possible to run the card at 600 megahertz HBM benchmark stable. By that I mean it was artifacting all over the place, but it didn't crash instantly. Without the capacitors it would crash instantly. So the Nitro cards should overclock HBM better than all of the other cards because they do have a bit more capacitance on the HBM VRM than the reference cards. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the auxiliary, which is a higher power rail than the HBM, or at least I suspect it to be. That's why I called this the auxiliary and that the HBM. And this is using again that same international rectifier power stage. So that would be another 60 amp power stage for the supporting circuitry of the GPU core. The only VRM I've left out on the card is the, is the, uh, Give me a second, 0.95 volt rail, which takes care of all the display stuff, and it's it's another one of those supporting voltages for the GPU core. And that one's located on the back of the card. It is not important unless you are doing uh, LN2 overclocking, and I will cover it when I get around to doing my Fury X's on LN2, and I will cover it for this card as well, because this one recycles the VRM design uh, from the reference PCB. So, yeah. Very, very nice uh, GPU design from Sapphire. Like this PCB is, I'd say probably just straight up the best of all the Fury cards you can buy. This one's the best one because most of the Furies available recycle, just use the reference design. And Asus have their own PCB, but eh, I, I haven't managed to get a good look at that one. And that one is a 12 phase. But if you just consider that these things are like four times the size of the ICs Asus is using, it's, yeah, I, I'm going to guess these are, Asus is using probably like 30 amp, uh, you know, integrated, well, power stages of some other design, because I don't think International Rectifier makes anything that small. In which case, this is still more powerful than that. So, yeah, I really should get a Fury PC, Fury Strix PCB to take a look at. Either way, this card is great. Like, this is awesome. You also get a BIOS switch, which is standard on all the Fury cards. Uh, I don't know if you get the LED load indicators, which I personally find super useful, but they're, you know, it, depending on what you're doing with them, they don't really matter. Uh, and another interesting feature, which somebody uh, pointed out on in the comment section on another Sapphire PCB breakdown I did, um, you get fuses on the inputs right here. So... Yeah, so that looks like, I think, yeah, that looks like 10 amps. So you basically get two 10 amp fuses per eight pin. So that gives you 40 amps uh, current capability for the car. That's 480 watts average. You could actually trip that now that I think about it. I saw my card pull like 450 watts. My Fury X, 450 watts on the 12 volt rail. So it's nice that it's there, but you might be able to actually go over that protection. Uh, if you're doing some really extreme overclocking and pushing a lot of core voltage through the card. Um, and, I mean, it's not really a big issue if these blow out. You can just solder right over them. Or you can solder, uh, you know, solder over them preempted before they blow up if you're going to be putting the card on LN2, in which case you don't worry about a uh, warranty anyway. If you do worry about warranty, well, you're not going to be messing with the PCB, and these are a nice protective feature. So... And you also wouldn't be running 1.5 volts through the GPU core, or 1.4, or whatever it was. It was like a really, really high voltage I needed to get that 450 watt power draw. Either way, um, yeah, nice PCB. You get some extra features like the BIOS switch and the fuses. Very powerful core voltage VRM, very clean VRMs on all ends. So, yeah. There's not really much more to say to this, so I guess this is where we pack up the video. Which means you need to like, share, and subscribe, and, you know, if you're not subscribed, like seriously, you need to know more about more GPU PCBs, so press that subscribe button. Um, like the video, obviously, and do consider donating to my Patreon so that I can do, you know, real-world projects instead of just staring at people's uh, photos. On which note, thanks to the guy who sent these photos in, uh, because without him, this wouldn't have been possible. So that's that for this video, and see you guys next time.